you have a bunch of work to do but you struggle to focus, this video is for you. You see, focusing is like a muscle. The more you train it, the more it grows and gets easier and easier to do it over time. But here's what most people miss. You can make focusing on anything you want 10 times easier if you just give your brain the right conditions. So in this video, we'll go over five simple science-based steps to rewire your brain to focus deeply for hours at a time and do your best work yet. Let's go. If you're new here, hi, I'm Sanya, I study psychology and neuroscience, and if you want more practical tips to improve brain health and performance, subscribe. Okay, let's get into the steps. Step one in our focus journey is sleep, because quality sleep is non-negotiable. When you sleep, your brain isn't just chilling, it's literally cleaning itself. Think of it as overnight maintenance, sweeping away all the neural garbage that accumulated during the day. So if you don't sleep well, what happens? Well, your brain can't really work as well because it hasn't had the chance to clean all this waste. This results in a perfect storm of irritability, brain fog, and of course, a complete inability to focus. Now, let's say you did get that great night of sleep. Amazing, congrats. Your morning brain is now kind of like a supercomputer. You're fresh, energized, and ready to tackle complex problems. As your day progresses, you naturally start to feel more tired, plus the likelihood that somebody will call you with a problem or a question increases significantly. This will likely disrupt your workflow and make it harder to concentrate. So harness those magical morning hours when your brain is operating at full capacity. That's likely the window when you'll find it easiest to lock in. But beyond sleep, your ability to focus will also depend on the food you eat. Or should I say, the food you don't eat, as there's substantial data showing that fasting can actually improve focus. So if you do intermittent fasting, that may be a great way to prime your brain for concentration. However, fasting isn't for everyone. I've tried it before and I've loved it, but I find that it doesn't always give me optimal energy levels. Whether you prefer to be in a fasted state or having some food really comes down to a personal preference. However, if you do decide to eat, make sure you don't eat too much, and certainly not too much sugar. Eating too much and having a belly full of food will draw blood to your intestines, making you feel sleepy. And if your blood sugar spikes, you'll experience a dip in a few hours, making your energy levels crash. Needless to say, this will make it very difficult for you to concentrate. The goal really is to have steady, consistent energy levels so you can focus for long periods of time. So bottom line, focus on light meals full of protein, vegetables and healthy fats. This will give you more sustained energy levels without feeling like you need to take a nap. The next step is one of the fastest ways to boost focus. Remove distractions. Look around your workspace and eliminate everything that usually distracts you. Put your phone in the other room if you have to or just put it on mute. Put on some headphones with some kind of music that will get you in the mood and just focus. Remove clutter from your desk and only leave the things that are absolutely necessary for you to do the task that you're trying to do. By carefully curating your environment, you're making it 1000 times easier to concentrate because now your brain isn't subconsciously distracted by all the things in your visual field or all the background noise. To take it further, I like to put on a timer for one hour and tell myself, okay, until the timer is done, I will focus on reading this chapter or doing these exercises or whatever it is that I have to do. This way you use your time more efficiently and you also know that a break is coming right after, so you make sure to use this time now to focus on the task. Let's say you've done this and you've entered the zone, so to speak. Amazing. Just as important is giving yourself time to rest. Time to do absolutely nothing. Take a walk, lie on the couch, make some tea, do something that will distract you and this will give your brain time to reset. And I know it's tempting, but trust me, don't be on your phone while resting, it will do more harm than good. Ideally, have a focus session of 45 minutes to about an hour and then give yourself at least 10 to 15 minutes to reset. And especially if you're learning something, that time off is essential for your brain to actually remember the information. It is actually while you're resting that the brain is consolidating the memories, that you're remembering the knowledge that you've learned. Alright, step 4 is adding meditation to your daily routine. And if you think meditation is not for you, hear me out. This interesting study made a group of people meditate for 13 minutes per day for 8 weeks. What they found was a significant decrease in anxiety and fatigue and a significant increase in attention and memory. And keep in mind, these people were not experienced in meditation prior to the study. So if you're now convinced and you want to give it a try, the way you can do it is just sit down or lie down in a comfortable position Close your eyes and just focus on your breath. It sounds simple, but it's surprisingly difficult to do because you have all of these thoughts coming up all the time and then you have to redirect your attention back to the breath. And this is exactly what will train your focus. Because what we're trying to train here is the ability to go back to the task at hand. And meditation is a great way to practice this. 
Okay, step number five really is optional, but it can be incredibly useful and it's of course caffeine. There is an incredible amount of research on caffeine and how it can boost mental performance. Caffeine will boost alertness, increase dopamine availability, and block adenosine, which is the molecule that tells your brain that you're tired and you need to go to sleep. That means, of course, you find it way easier to focus and have more energy to sustain your attention for longer periods of time. Now, how much should you actually take? Well, it depends on your tolerance. For most people, that will be around 100 to 400 milligrams. However, if you're somebody who's prone to anxiety, please don't go ahead and chug a double espresso. That will be way too much caffeine for you, probably. Start small, notice how you feel. If you have jitters, then maybe coffee is not your best friend and you'll be better off drinking something like black tea or green tea or matcha. These days, I like to switch between coffee and matcha. I find that matcha is much better for me because I do tend to be prone to anxiety and it gives me more calm energy levels without the jitters and the coffee crash but it really depends on the person it really depends on how you prefer to take your caffeine one last thing timing absolutely matters get your caffeine in before noon because that way it won't affect your sleep negatively and remember our first step that sleep is non-negotiable so protect your sleep at all costs all right these were the five steps i hope this was helpful let me know in the comments what you like to do to increase your focus and i'll see you in the next one bye